I am Lynn Holly Johnson, also known as uh, BB Doll, and I'm here with Really 007 Podcast. And now, empty chair, last year's Eastern Western Champion, is Bobby Zimbabwe, and coming up fast from the Western Western Champion, Hunter Paul. There's Eric Kriegler. He's German champion. Isn't he beautiful? You know something, BB, you're fickle. Hey, Eric! Welcome, everyone, to the Really 007 podcast. I'm Tom Pickup, and we're here for a very, very special interview today with a very special Bond girl. And you can see her here for yourself. It's BB Dahl. It's Lynn Holly Johnson. So thank you very much for joining us all the way from America. Sure. I'm happy to be with you guys. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to have you. And, you know, you've, you've always been had, had a special place in our hearts as Bond fans growing up. You really have. And to see you well, now. But, uh, you guys are so young. Oh, uh, well, we, had, we had it on video. We had it on video. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Oh yeah, don't, nobody, yeah, nobody saw for your eyes only in a theater, right? Not who's here, no. No. People no. We saw it. We saw it last year in a the theater. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh really? That's fun. Yeah. The 60th anniversary, they showed all the Bond films one a week. Oh right. So right. it's amazing to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Even better on the big screen, yeah. 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 It looked fantastic, the film. It really did. It really did. Ah. Uh, well, John Glenn, it, it was uh, it, it was pretty fantastic to watch how he could visualize everything being put together. I mean, he was just really terrific. And of course, Willie Bogner and yeah, the mm. stunts. Holy cow! Right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's got so much in it, hasn't it? We'll, we'll have to we'll have to break it down a bit, but. Um... <laughs> To st- I mean, to start with, you know, just to say, if, you, if you're not aware of our, uh, for any viewers who aren't aware of us, we are on YouTube, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify. You can subscribe to us. We've got lots of other e- interviews. People from Fear Eyes Only, such as John Glenn, of course, the director, but also John Marino, who I know is friends with, uh, with mm. them. So <laughs> loads of is, connections. Yeah, yeah he, he's a picnic. He's just... <laughs> he is. Well, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm seeing him in a couple of weeks' time, and I'm going to just yeah. say to him, Lynn Holly says, you're a picnic. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm giving him a big, giant hug. Oh, <laughs> oh, lovely. So cute. Should we start with the beginning, then? How, how, first of all, a bit on your, your, your non-acting career, your skating. How, how did you get into that? It, I, I had to sit on the bench while my mom and my sister and brother were having lessons and I was pretty tiny and by the time I was about five they put skates on me and um, when the session came to an end maybe I was four let's say I was four because if I say I'm five it sounds pretty bad because when the session came to an end, I started screaming and crying as they tried to take the skates off. And I just thought it was over. My life was over if I just couldn't keep these these little ice skates on. So oh. that, that was kind of the start. And um, I, I was also doing a lot of um, modeling at the time, you know, like catalog work. And um, did, did you, do you guys get... Did, well, you guys are so young. Like <laughs> Sears catalog. Oh, I mean, we've heard of it. Yeah, Sears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all that kind of stuff, and then television commercials. So I was acting way back, um, not as a character, but I was in front of the camera a, a load of times before um, before I did my first movie, Ice Castles. Yeah, and it's, mm. it's all performance, isn't it? The, the skating, it's all expression and performance oh right right and actually now it's even much more of a performance um um skating now choreography and uh, wow how they um feel the music today it's you know my competitive era was um much more specific with um uh technique 
And now everything they do is just elegant and beautiful and to the music and everything. So uh, skating has come a long way. Well, you, must um, been, you must have been pretty good, though. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you did win some, uh, some medals, didn't you, growing up? Incredible. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was um, second in the country in um, 74. Wow. And um, then I was injured and um, I was out for a year, which, you know, at that at that age and that part of a career to be out for a whole year, that was pretty yeah. devastating. Um, but uh, a couple years later, I went in the in ice capades. Um, probably you're more familiar with holiday and ice in Europe, right? Well, it's Ice Capades is our version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I was uh, um, it, like 18 years old and touring with Ice Capades. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so what kind of stuff does that involve? You know, what would it look like in the audience? I did uh, two solos and a pair. So... Uh, you know, skimpy costumes and a lot of a lot of pizzazz and <laughs> yeah. But but the one thing um, I, I, there wasn't that much pizzazz. I still looked like a competitive skater, and that's that's how I got the my first movie, Ice Castles, because I was pretty new in the show. So the character in Ice Castles was supposed to look like a Midwest competitive skater not not polished and I was just recently as a competitive skater even though I was already professional in the show and so that um, made it uh, um, kind of a nice transition to get that job. That was obviously your, your big break in terms of going into the mainstream and entertainment was it what was that like to sort of suddenly be thrust into the spotlight. Well, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's so funny because um, I thought as soon as we're done filming, I'm I'll be back with the touring with the ice show, and so when I left the show, um, uh, the producer at Columbia Pictures, um, they negotiated a leave of absence from the tour. So even though it looked like you know, oh my goodness, doors are opening, right? Um, I thought, you know, we were just in Erie, Pennsylvania, and we were headed to Little Rock, Arkansas, and I thought I was just going to be catching back up with the show. And um, then I realized um, this is kind of the start of a pretty cool career. So, you know, I pursued it diligently, sort of how I pursued my competitive era. You got a Golden Globe nomination. Yeah, so yeah. Your work, which is yeah, amazing. Um, absolutely That's amazing. Crazy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh well, no, it's great. I, mean, I was so surprised, but you know, while doing all those movies, for me, it was just, what am I getting next time around? You know, just keep auditioning, and what's going to be the next job? I never felt like, oh wow, I got a Golden Globe nomination. You know, I'm. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. here I've made it but there was there was a funny thing about I had a publicist um, in New York and um, who was hired through Columbia Pictures and she said to me you've really made it and I said what <laughs> <laughs> and she said no you've really made it because the press has already written your obit so oh, you've made it <laughs> That's and I thought, ah, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm like this nice girl from from Illinois, you know. And now I've got an obit written for me, and I'm 18 years old. Something. Oh. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't even know what an obit was. I said to her, well, "What? You know, just yeah." <laughs> so, yeah, that was written. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least it says how much you'd achieved at a very young age, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we don't want those, do we? Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's add a few decades on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
So yeah, on the film Ice Castles, how how did you find it? And you you know you you had some experienced actors with you. You know you had Tom Skerritt, Colin Dewhurst, amongst others. Right. How did you find sort of acting alongside these very experienced actors? Well, you know it's a funny thing because, um, and, and I I just kind of blame it on sports. You know, I grew up since I was five years old, very diligent about training and you know, like blinders on, um, today I'm going to learn this jump today, you know, I'm going to do, you know, that kind of focus. And, um, first of all, I'd never really gone out to the movies. I mean, people have asked me, what's your favorite James Mm. Bond movie? I mean, at the time when I did Free Eyes Only, what's your favorite? I never saw a James Bond movie. I was skating. I was training all the time. So, um, I learned how famous Tom Skerritt was and Robbie Benson and Mm -hmm. Colleen Dewhurst. And it was, you know, working with Colleen Dewhurst, that was mesmerizing. Like I just get lost watching her and um, um, yeah, she was pretty amazing. Everybody was amazing. And Mm -hmm. the director, I mean, I was taken care of to create this, character of Lexi it was really really neat to have that be the start of my movie career um it was just really nice nice people all yeah. around oh, lovely. That's good to mm-hmm. hear, isn't it? yeah lovely. <laughs> you were going to do a cameo is it right in the remake because they did a t- I've, I've only thing. heard that from press oh right I, okay yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> I think somebody created that idea. Uh, <laughs> would you have been up yeah. for it? I mean, somebody created it, not involved with the production. No, right, in yeah. the remake. So I, yeah, <laughs> but I knew, I knew people who did the choreography, and I knew, and of course, it was the same director. So yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's mm. interesting, isn't it? All those, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, like a re, sort of a reinvision in reinvisaging of the film in in many right. ways. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 So, well, there were there were before we get onto Bond, there were some other films, and one of our good friends of the podcast, Chris, he's really interested in the Watcher in the Woods. He he's a big fan, and mm. we we've That's actually cool. I mean, it's, it's very hard to find now in England, but there's been different versions, haven't there? And there's been sort of different he, he, cuts of it, I believe, and it's sort of he, had a life yes. of over the years. Yeah, we went back. Um, uh, 11 months later to reshoot the oh. ending and um that was right before I started working on for your eyes only so I was already there at Pinewood which was yeah. pretty fun yeah. yeah but um you know that movie it was when um Disney was trying to not be Disney and not be hmm. you know sweet and simple and um, so they wanted to create this really scary movie. Something happened in these woods. Something that has never been explained. And it's happening again. Now. Did you hurt yourself? Oh, it's just a little cut. What sort of person are you? Sensitive? Do you sense things? The past pursues the present. Like a recurring dream, what began as a game ended when a young girl vanished into thin air. That was my daughter's name. What do you think happened to Karen? I think she's still out there. Karen is trying to come back. What did you see? Not Karen outside there. Don't you understand? It's someone else. Only Jan can help Karen. But who is going to help Jan? <laughs> Betty Davis, Carol Baker, David McCallum, and Lynn Holly Johnson. 
Whatever happened to my Karen could happen to you. The Watcher in the Woods. There were arguments on set all the time because it was um, uh, Disney's son-in-law and um, he, now I forgot the other gentleman's name, the other producer. Anyway, they, it, one wanted to hold on to that Disney flavor and one wanted to move out and become something new. And um, um, I've, I've told the story that's like the perfect example in the movie. There was, um, I, I get spooked on the horse, mm. right? So the horse is galloping along and I'm screaming. And um, uh, the, the way it's shot, you, you can see me coming to this little bridge, you know, like way out in in England, right? In the woods and everything. And um, you see this lorry truck coming to the bridge. It's a little narrow bridge, big truck. And, and it's a close up on the driver and he's eating this berry pie. And of course he sees the, um, this galloping horse with this mad woman screaming and cuts in front of him and he tumbles off the bridge in the lorry, right? <laughs> and, that, and then it cuts to me still galloping, right? So the argument was they wanted a shot of the driver coming up behind the steering wheel with berries all over his face, right? So that was, let's hold on to Disney. He's okay. Not that big a deal. <laughs> Isn't that cute? He's got berries all over his face. And the other gentleman was like, you know, the audience is wondering, oh my God, I wonder if that guy's still alive, you know? Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, that, that was kind of throughout the production. And then even when we were promoting it, um, I, I was on this tour in the States and we were going to colleges to promote it and it was not going very well. And that's because it still hung on to that Disney flavor. It didn't really go all the way out, but you know what, in the long run, it doesn't matter because people come up to me today and say that they really love mm, that movie. Lovely. You know, they, the, so, yeah. you know, kids and, you know, 12 year olds yeah. love the movie. Right. But not, not college kids. No. So, so, um, mm. yeah. Um, you know, movies, it's like this incredible jigsaw puzzle. I mean, uh, you've seen there can be brilliant scripts and it just doesn't fly and there could be an okay script and it becomes this yeah. blockbuster movie and you know it takes every person on set is an important piece of that jigsaw puzzle and you just hope it all goes <laughs> together nicely so forgive me I've, I've not seen this film and hopefully we can get a copy of it somewhere somewhere lads yeah but um i i'm assuming that it didn't involve any ice skating right so so but is this the it, first time that you were doing a role without uh, you know without the skating aspect aspect yeah, to it well, or it certainly for a my, feature yeah film? just my second movie and yeah. um so yeah no skating and um betty davis was in yeah betty davis. yeah amazing yeah, amazing. yeah. And at the time, I just thought, I've, I've got the next gig. This is great. I wonder what I'm going to do next. I mean, <laughs> I, I knew she was a pretty big name, you know, but, mm. uh, so, so that's, <laughs> you know, things. Um, I, I wish I had, um, well, you know, you're, you're, you're deeply working, but I wish I had hung on to, you know, at least, you know, let's have lunch, you know, in 10 years or something. Mm. How you doing? You know, I mean, of course, there were no <laughs> cell numbers. But, you know, I, I mean, I was married to um, George Clooney on a television show. Oh. But I can't call up George. <laughs> and, and actually, we did kind of hang out a little bit. Um, before I got this role as his wife, 
but you know, today it's just kind of fun to say, yeah, I was married to George for one week. <laughs> By we the end of the week, we were both dead. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to be fair, Lynn, I, um, I've heard rumors that George told his anecdote that he was once married to Lynn Holly Johnson as well. Wow. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As his first wife. <laughs> As his first wife, that's it. <laughs> well, in the, the, our friend Chris, yeah, he, he he's asking about, he wants to ask about John Hoff. What was John Hoff like? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have not worked with anybody that I've been, I, I mean, I've just been really lucky in this business. Um, yes, he was wonderful. Um uh, it, there were a lot of spooky things in that movie, and um, Ian Bannon, he kind of scared me. Um, uh, and of course, you know, horseback riding, I was that was not my best feat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, as I was telling you the story about, you know, me screaming on the horse, so you know. Um, I practiced with the stunt coordinator for a few weeks riding. And um, when it came time to shoot, um, there was a little road and the camera truck was going to drive down the road. And then there was this path that I am going to be on the horse and the camera and the horse were running parallel, right? Shooting, right? And... Um, we showed the horse the path. We walked the whole path and the horse knew the path. Right. And so then, you know, I, I don't know. Nobody asked me. I just felt I was in character. Um, I'm supposed to be spooked. So naturally I'm screaming. And as I screamed, the horse oh. ran, you know, galloped faster so the truck following us goes faster. Well, you know, within, you know, 10 seconds, we were at the end of the path. <laughs> and the horse realizes he's at the end of the path because now there's trees in front of him, puts out the front paws to stop. And I just like this went right out of frame. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just off the off his head. But <sighs> they... They said the next day when they saw it in dailies, they said it was pretty cool how I just kind of went right out of frame like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they really wanted to have this movie be scary, they probably should have left that in. But, yeah. you know. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Even, even when we were promoting it, we were not allowed to say the word Disney. We had to say released through Buena Vista Pictures. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you know it was going to be a, a scary film when you started it, though? Or did you... Yeah. You did? Yeah. But um, being my second movie and, mm -hmm. you know, Ice Castles was everybody was warm and loving. And this was um, the, the other characters were scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, uh, the dogs playing... Um, Ian Bannon's dog when we did that scene at the castle and the dog is supposed to um, yeah, it was a lot and of course um, Miss Bette Davis um, she was a little yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, <laughs> I think we know what you're getting at yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I never knew but she was very very suave and cool, you know, but um, boy, yeah, <laughs> wish I'd talk to her a little bit more. But... <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, you went from, well, the golden era of Hollywood leading lady there, Bette Davis, to the best British institution ever, James Bond. I know, isn't that yeah. unbelievable? Oh. And I had no idea at the time that that movie uh, i mean it, it they're a big hit here yeah. but at, in in what year was this oh, it was a couple of decades ago <laughs> they yeah. told me um 60 to 70 percent of their business is from you guys 
and they're yeah. they're big yeah. here. I have no idea. Oh yeah, mm. but I mean the the big all over the world, aren't they? Yeah. Well. yeah, 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 yeah. When we did um, this tour to promote the movie in some countries, you know the legs, the poster. Yeah, the okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They would take a magic marker and paint shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that poster would be valuable, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A limited edition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, <laughs> so can I ask, please, how how did you how did you get the role? Um, like, what was the auditioning process um, like? Um, my agent said that. Um, we're gonna, you're gonna go and meet Cubby Broccoli. Went to their, went to Cubby's house. Wow. Just kind of met him like in, you know, like the South Wing. It wasn't, you know, wasn't like, you know, <laughs> welcome to our house and here's the couch or whatever. It was, <laughs> you know, kind of like maybe a audition room or something. But we just met and I was told that um, Michael Wilson created the character of BB Doll. Right. And right. Um, they saw me in Ice Castles and kind of worked that in because they liked me in Ice Castles. Oh. So, mm -hmm. That's amazing. So that, must, that must have been pretty amazing to hear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I felt, yeah, really lucky. Mm. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often, does oh, nice. it? A role written just No, like no. Absolutely. Uh, right. Right. Mm. I mean, it's oh. complete. It's a complete one-off character in the franchise. Yeah. Is, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, um, I, I, at the time, um, well, I think maybe a couple decades beyond For Your Eyes Only, I had the title of being the only girl to be turned down. By <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was a joke. I don't think I am anymore. And and oh. uh, pretty much the youngest, right? But I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to make a point of this. I mean, sorry, it's a bit of a tangent, but they, they get this thing about how in the film BB Dahl, um, she 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 attempts to seduce James Bond. James Bond rejects her, and then and yeah. then later on, Aris Christatos, um, yeah. you know, she says you're too old, you're an old man, and he's trying it on with her. But Julian Glover. Is younger than Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think people knew that. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it doesn't spoil it for me. It makes oh, no. it even more entertaining. Yeah. But I, I uh, if I don't tell you now, I never will. So yeah. I may as well. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I didn't know it at the time, certainly. Oh. The age difference, yeah, <laughs> in those two, and and Johnny <laughs> Juan Marino, Johnny Marino, he was great yeah. fun, oh, great yeah. great character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's you... kind of the cool thing about acting, right? So yeah. he's this brilliant actor, right? You know, stage and everything, and um, he took this little character and so memorable. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter how many lines you have. I mean, and Charles Dance. I mean, everybody was really wonderful in that. That was just it. It was loads of fun. Yeah. So did you get did you get to know quite a few of the of your co stars quite well? So obviously you've mentioned John, our wonderful yeah. friend John. Yeah. There was John, John Nyman, Nyman who played yep. your, you know, yeah, your wait, pin up or whatever. Window, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, wait, who threw who out the window? Well, yeah, Bond, Bond, push it, yeah, Bond that's, forces that's, him yeah. to go out the window. Yeah. yeah.
and yeah. Jill Jill Bennett and and Jill Bennett, various others. Yeah. Jill Bennett, yeah. Yeah. She's passed away, right? Mm. Yeah. That's Carol Bouquet, a lovely lady. Yeah. Didn't get to chat with her too much. Yeah. It, there was a lot of wonderful people and you know, the locations were yeah. special mm. and it was kind of cool because now this was my second movie at Pinewood. So yeah. uh, I knew my way around there mm. when I was doing Watcher in the Woods, um, Superman was being shot. Oh, yeah. Wow. Reeve, we kind of hung out a little bit. He was, uh, he was wonderful. I mean, that's just such oh. a oh. sad story. Paul Weston and on the, uh, Superman said I flew a little bit, which yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's so good. Uh, yeah. I hope Christopher, I'm sure, was just as lovely in real life as he was as Clark. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I hope their son is doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, definitely. Right? Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. Sad story. Um, so yeah. with, with regards to like the friendship that you built on set with John and and um, Charles Dance, was that predominantly in Cortina? Yeah, yeah. So could you tell us a bit about like I don't know I I'm not prying too much, but maybe yeah. just the friendships that that grew from that mm -hmm. at Cortina and the things that you got up to. Well, I I think uh, part of it is. Well, well, those guys are from theater, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And theater is, the budget for theater is a whole lot different than the budget on a James Bond movie. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So there's a lot of happy people on a James Bond movie. Um, and that comes down from, you know, Cubby and Michael Wilson and, well, now Barbara. But, um it's you know it's it's not the type of movie where uh, we only have this much film we got to get it in one shot you know it's not and you know you had you had the lady at Pinewood walking in with the tray of sweets at three o'clock I mean oh. everybody's oh. pretty happy because it you have time to uh, to make sure the scene is good and you have time to rehearse and you um it's just a more um maybe it's more intimate but it's not as hard pressed as we have no money we got to get it shot right now yeah mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've got a movie where where they um the electricity was shut down because somebody, you know, it was just a bad budget. And and the director was like, it's okay. We'll shoot it by a window. It'll be a silhouette. It'll be great. You know, it's like, ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> just get it done. But, but working with all of them and they're all, they all know each other, you know, the crew, because if you're back at Pinewood, you know, it's a lot of the same crew and, you're you're doing a movie that is already successful yeah. from the previous one and people know how it works right mm -hmm. so that jigsaw puzzle even though each of course each movie is you know extremely demanding but it's just nice because people know each other and so then from from going from pinewood um then we're in cortina which you know is it's like uh maybe how people used to say aspen is here or yeah. vale it's yeah. just you know the just a lovely spot mm -hmm. with you know very wealthy people walking around and um just it's just really really nice and you know i've been on both ends of budgets yeah. of movies yeah and so there's a lot of happiness going around when there's <laughs> a lot of dollars going around <laughs> bad boy <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and roger would be playing backgammon with cubby and oh. glenn would say um we're ready for you roger and 
He would say, wait, and he'd <laughs> take his turn, roll him the dice, you know? <laughs> so that, that's that budget, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. Right? <laughs> so, good. so tell us about Roger and your experience of, of working with, with him. Oh, he was wonderful. Oh. Uh, yeah, really sweet. And, you know, my sister was with me because I was so young. Was <laughs> I 18 or 19? Mm -hmm. I think I was 19. And, um, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than, um, no, wait, I'm a decade older than Roger's kids, I think. But anyway, um, he, he was warm and loving and very yeah. sweet. Mm. And, and anybody who says, you know, stuff about philandering, I, I don't care. He was warm and sweet and, yeah. um, mm. yeah, a fine, fine gentleman. Oh, brilliant just everyone, brilliant yeah. everyone we've yeah. spoken to from the bond films who've worked with him all say the same thing yeah yeah, yeah. Do. doing yeah. anything you know untoward he's always treated his co-stars with respect and he's always yeah and everybody with. everybody yeah, everybody yeah, from, everybody yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody uh, i mean you know the electrician right yeah. all the mm. way down yeah yep. no, okay. yeah and he john marino told us that he liked to sort of just just as you're about to start shooting, he'd, he'd tell you a gag or a, a funny story oh. just to put you off. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he would make Michael Wilson just like pull out his hair. Yes. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and John Glenn would say, okay, Roger, how about let's just do the scripted line just once. All right. <laughs> We're just going to do the scripted line. Okay, <laughs> and we go again, and there was joy all around, and you know, then there'd be another line thrown in, and then Roger would crack up and say, "That's for the blooper roll. That's for the uh, uh, Christmas Eve roll or New Year's Eve roll, whenever they were showing that." It, he just he had a lot of joy. It was really oh, wonderful. Oh. Did he do a bit of? improvisation with the some of his lines did he sort of change them a little bit oh yes <laughs> yeah good good <laughs> I, I think i know what you're referring to huh? well, buy, no, buy no. in an ice cream baby you don't know <laughs> <laughs> don't they have showers at the ice rink how did you get in here one of the porters is a fan he'll do anything for me and i'll do anything for you well i'm exceedingly flattered bb but you're in training. That's a laugh. Everybody knows it builds up muscle tone. Well, I'm not building up a little more muscle tone by putting on your clothes. Don't you like me? Why, I think you're wonderful, B.B., but I don't think your Uncle Harry would approve. Him? He thinks I'm still a virgin. Yes, well, you get your clothes on. I'll buy you an ice cream. Ah, shall we? <clears throat> Didn't you ever come up for air? That's where I'll get the gold medal. Breath control. Yes, well, you, you can't lose. <laughs> well, actually, this time which might be the one you're referring to i don't think this was roger's idea i think it was one of the stuntmen's idea possibly or it, it, it maybe somebody else or maybe it was roger i don't know and i guess i'll never know now right so anyway um so the scene happens where i climb into roger's bed <laughs> And then I'm supposed to throw out the clothes, right? And um, now, mind you, I'm a very innocent child from Illinois, right? So somebody gave me a rubber duck. And so now we're shooting, and they told me to do this. 
And my parents, because this was shot a couple of days before Christmas, my parents were standing right there. And um, so they said, instead of throwing out your clothes, ask Roger if he would like the duck. <laughs> so I move the blanket and I throw out and uh, the duck. And I said, want a duck? <laughs> ah yep that, that was uh, a lot of laughter and i think my parents were like oh wait what did she say yeah yeah <laughs> it made it quite uh, a scene, i think <laughs> yeah uh, oh i need i need this cut i need this yeah, cut yeah, yeah. yeah this really? delete scene <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Can I can I talk about the character of BB Doll because I, I I've got to say this and I'm and I'm not just uh, just saying it for the sake of it. When I came out of the cinema last year, yeah. um, they asked me what was your favorite part, and for the podcast, as I said straight away, BB Doll. And, really? And, oh, I I love I love you. I've got to say, like, I... <laughs> yeah. Um, um, oh, thank you. No, I I do. Well, I, I think. think yeah. Yeah. It it was it was a it was this fun little part yes. yeah he yeah. created and you know <laughs> with all this uh scary uh you know shooting and you know stunts and everything and then you'd have this silly rascal um <laughs> playing playing pretty silly <laughs> yeah. but but it's comedy relief in yeah. what is quite a right. serious film you know right yeah right. Yeah, you really do make such an impact and with so many um, iconic lines that I can just <laughs> yeah. think think of now, you know. So it was, oh, it was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Everyone thank knows you. It, it builds up muscle tone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and I can only say the word Cuba in a BB doll voice. It's like, yeah. Cuba! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 80, 90, 20, 20, 50 more. That's the pits. I'm supposed to be skating in Oslo, in Innsbruck. What are we doing in this creepy place? Our plans are changed. We are going to live in Cuba for a few months. Cuba? Mm, you can skate privately without distractions. I will be your audience. What a drag that'll be. I want to win the gold medal. We all want that. I know what you want, but you're too old for me. I'm splitting. You have done this. Poisoned her against me. Don't blow your top, Harry. Leave her alone. I will deal with you, Jakob Brink, as I deal with everyone who betrays me. Bibi, you're so young. You must have a sponsor. I'll find another one. Yeah, James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. And it, but it actually, like, as well as it being a comedy character, that it's not really a character that's in many films. In terms of, she's not really an ally, but she's right. not really she's not really a villain either, is she? No. She's right, right. I'm just kind of stuck in there as yeah. a little escape yeah. thing, right? Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, was did you get the script before, and like, did you sort of work into the character before you started shooting? I'd be interested to know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I worked with people here in LA. Yeah. Before I went over there, um, how you know, I kind of done that with each role, and a good director puts you in that character, and so John Glenn is pretty wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Fairly recently went to the 007 GB gala dinner where they honoured John Glenn with a lifetime achievement yeah. award. And oh. he, was, he was lost for words. It was it was mm. amazing. He, he oh, absolutely... wonderful! Yeah. And his wife was, you know, his wife was in tears, and there was yeah. an awful mm. lot of emotion on the night. And um, I'm oh, sorry you couldn't wow. be there, but Lynn gave an amazing video tribute to John, which was really appreciated. Yeah. And John. I did turn to him when when it was on, and he he was absolutely loving it. He was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great moment. Oh, Wonderful. that's great. 
Uh, yeah, I wish I could have been there. Hi, John. How are you? This is Lynn Holly. I hope you remember me. It was a few decades ago, but boy, this is a wonderful event to honor you, the director extraordinaire. I loved working with you. You were so patient. You were so serious. And I could just see how each step you were able to put the puzzle together. And that's because you were this wonderful editor too. Well, you have created beautiful movies for thousands of people have loved all your work. And I'm honored to have worked with you. Take care, John. I wish I could be at your event. Sail on everybody. Have you managed to like see John or keep in contact with him over the years? Well, I saw him, um, I went to the last event um, uh, when they did all the music. Oh, last the, year? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, right. The sound of 007. Right. Yeah. Right. That was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah I saw <laughs> a lot of people. That was, that was pretty oh. fun. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. So, John, yeah, what? Everyone again. Everyone we speak to, and when speaking to him, he he just says he lets the actors get on with it. He lets he lets the stunt people get on with their thing, and he's there as a sort of multitask manager, making it so. But he's much. He's more than that, isn't he? He is. He's got a great eye for detail and a. a oh, a really absolutely! Yeah, yeah, coming from editing, of course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Mm. Um. Also saw um Barbara at that last event, which was pretty fun. She's incredible what she has taken, like this thing that fell in her lap, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many family members could have carried on what Cubby started, right? Yeah. So what yeah, yeah. Michael done is pretty amazing. So yeah. when we were doing For Your Eyes Only, Barbara was there, of course, every day, all day, just watching. Yes, yeah. Just yeah. Watching. Right. And, you know, I realized years later, oh, gee, that's what she was doing. Because at the time, I thought, wow, that that daughter of Cubby, she's not so fun, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's, she's brilliant. And... Yeah, what her and Michael have mm. created, it's unbelievable. Because, mm. of course, she was, she was born as the Bond film series was born, pretty much. And, right. she's now, you know, she's now right at the top. So she's she's only known right. James Bond in her life, you know. Everything mm. right. she's done, she's right. got that background. And, yeah, you're right. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people would have said, no, it's too much for me. I don't want to follow my father like that. But she's obviously right. taken it. Or yeah, or just you know, you know, there's too many temptations. I don't know. Maybe maybe in England people are much more focused than crazy, outrageous California, where no, no. Kids, <laughs> you know, kids of of famous people, you're lucky if they live to be an adult, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, too many crazy things out here. <laughs> Oh. Well, there's always a place for you in foggy Manchester if you ever want to. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah. Well, I was there doing um, an autograph show probably oh, right. maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, oh, wow. 10 years right. ago. Right, right. For and... Bond, so for bond, for, it was a Bond event or? Um, no, it was a lot of people. Um uh, Margo, who played Lois Lane. Oh, Superman, she wow. was there. A lot of people have gone on. When I think, when I yeah. think back of all this stuff, wow. Mm. <laughs> it is, it is I guess, I guess, I guess, what I re I realized, holy cow, really, I'm old, and that career was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you were but, very young. That you were extremely young at the time. So they're obviously a lot older than you. Most of the people you acted mm. with in yeah. right, so, yeah. yeah. And it must be like a real testament to your legacy that years on, everybody is still praising B.B. Dahl. I mean, like, so I think I said it, I think I've mentioned it to you. There's this account online. Yeah. There's a B.B. Dahl yeah. fan account. And on basically Twitter. Yeah. On, twi on Twitter. And this person tweets as B.B. Dahl. 
So every <laughs> so like there will be you know a news article about something yeah. completely standard in the world, yeah. And they will report it as what BB would say. <laughs> and like, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. It, it's, it's brilliant, or should I be embarrassed? No, 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 no. 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 It's, it does. It's a loving tribute in a way. Yeah, it's got like a yeah. disclaimer like, oh, this is not God. Lynn Holly Johnson, you know? <laughs> and, and, oh, that's yeah. so funny. Oh, that's yeah. funny. And, and wow. We did tell this person that there was a possibility that we're like, <laughs> you know, we might be speaking to you, and they were like, "You've got to tell her about about our, my tribute thing." I mean, he, he is this massive fan of yours. I don't know his actual name. I just know him it's as BB Dow. But yeah, is, it, <laughs> is it a man or a man or a woman? I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, knowing, knowing the Bond fandom, I'm I'm sure it's <laughs> yeah. a man. But <laughs> wow, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, very pop very popular. Yeah, you've got a life of your own there. Yeah. What's going no on idea. There? I had no idea when I was doing that, I, when I got the role that I would be this age and, and somebody would want to interview me. I had no oh. idea. I had no idea. I I didn't even I mean I knew, you know, James Bond, it was a series of movies, but Oh my gosh! If you had said to me in those days, "You'll be 65 years old," someone would be interviewing you, I would be laughing hysterically. <laughs> no. But that you know, yeah. not everyone is interviewed, and not all the characters have endured, in, even in James Bond. But certainly, mm. certainly yours has. I, I do think <laughs> that. You, I mean, you you saying you were very young, innocent at the time, and being yeah. presented as that, but she isn't at all innocent. <laughs> Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So were, you, were your mum and dad okay with the role? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think mom and dad had uh, figured out maybe a little bit better than I could. At that right, time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they they thought it was they thought Roger was fantastic, and of mm. course. Mm. You know, they knew I was in good hands because mm. Covey was, oh my gosh, you know, just um, warm and, um, you know, I, I, now the the so-called Hollywood business is, it, it, I think it might have calmed down, right? And people are uh, serious. But when I was working on this, you know, I'm coming out of the era when the so-called Hollywood business had a pretty bad reputation, you know, hmm. um, a lot of nastiness. And so I think mom and dad were happy they could see I was in good hands. Hmm. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if they realized, you know, I'd be doing an interview, you know, that, that, that the movie would have, I mean, we knew the movies, the, the James Bond movie had legs, but you know, I don't think mom and dad realized, you know, I'll still be selling autographs or whatever, or doing interviews or whatever. Uh, yeah. Mm. It, I, it was just, you know, one more job. And that's kind of how yeah. I looked at it. Yeah. Very few actors have the role that's, as you know, over 40 years on, it's just talked about every day. I mean, there's even, there's even an account on Twitter for Kriegler. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's not as good, not as good as he's not Baby as funny. Doll, that one, no. <laughs> well, he isn't the character, isn't he? So no, no, that's yeah. true. But what do you, what do you make of your BB and Kriegler? Do you do you think do you think he likes girls? Do you <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I I think <laughs> was there a concern? I think. Um, well, yeah. Don't you say something like he won't. He won't even yeah. talk to girls or some, some yeah. and you yeah. say some you say something like that. Good right. <laughs> yeah. James! James, what took you so long? Well, I took the scenic route. Tell me more about your boyfriend, Eric Kriegler. He doesn't smoke, he only eats health foods, and he won't even talk to girls. 
James, you're jealous. Well, of course. <laughs> what else can you tell me about my rival for your affections? <laughs> they say he's a defector from East Germany. Bibi, it is time for your rub down. Alive. <laughs> Farewell, Mr. Bond, but not goodbye. That's kind of interesting when you look at it with today's eyes. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Of course, at the time, it, uh, you know, mm. nobody thought, you know, that was just, you know, the serious athlete, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But that's funny now. I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then he's, he's not very nice to, to BB. No, no. <laughs> and I guess that she enjoys that challenge. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like, you know, going after <laughs> James Bond. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do something more appropriate, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, she does win the gold medal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh well, that was that it was just loads of fun, you know, that outdoor ice rink and Yeah. It was freezing, freezing. I mean, I did a lot of outdoor skating, doing ice castles, but that day, mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, once again, growing up as an athlete, never touched alcohol, never even thought about alcohol. And so the um, wardrobe and makeup and hair between shots, they would say, here's a shot, have a shot, you know, oh. just to warm up. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I never, I didn't even know what a shot was, yeah, hardly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, um, I mean, talk about, you know, what's his name? He won't even talk to girls because he's a serious athlete. I was yeah. a serious athlete. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> so did you, did you end up going to like a, a prem, the premiere and a, was it a royal premiere, you know, with? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There was Roger. Topol and me. I think Michael Wilson was in front of Roger, you know, when you right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't I Barbara must have well no Cubby. Cubby was there. Barbara was not meeting, but I think Michael Wilson was behind me and Cubby was first and then Roger and then Topol and me. And um that was pretty cool to meet. Um, Lady Diana. Yeah. Wow. wow. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and I was supposed to, you know, you learn the protocol, right? And you're not supposed to touch them, of course. Hmm. You just uh, our President Biden put his arm around, <laughs> <laughs> around your king. Oh my God, it's all <laughs> over the news. So anyway, I was not supposed to touch them. And I had to go to Harrods to get gloves because you can't touch the skin, right? right. Hmm. And I'm supposed to curtsy. And I totally blew it. <laughs> wait, first first I met Princess Anne or oh, yeah, White yeah. Mark. Yeah. yeah. And then it was Diana. And I think Diana and I were, you know, pretty close in age. Yeah, and I think we looked at each other, and we, both of us started giggling. And I forgot the curtsy, and I put my hand out, and she put her hand out. I think I did that. Oh. Nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> it was just I was like two young girls out yeah. in the town. It was, oh, it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. BB, BB, and Diana would be yeah, some yeah. some party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we would have fun, right? We yeah. could cut a rug. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Even then, it shows how natural she was, and she wasn't sort of yeah. You just did yeah. it felt right at the time, and it's great that right, right. Because I remember we had like eye contact, and then everything fell apart on oh. both sides. Right. <laughs> that was a nice moment. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you mentioned, uh, you mentioned another Topol. sad story, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of it's going, isn't there? With the mm. And to and Topol has recently died, of course, as well. Yes. Awful, yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. And he was wonderful. Mm. Uh, eh, I'm old. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 
You don't uh, look good. He was wonderful. And boy, give Johnny a big hug when you see him. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I've I've got to say this. Like he he and he thinks so much of you. He really yeah, does. He, he does. does. He does. He, he really does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate gem. I mean, I'm just like this basic kid. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he looks on on you like a daughter. Really. That's wonderful. <laughs> but no, I'm not. I mean, I feel like I'm much closer to his age. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Oh. So what, yeah, what was Topol like to work with? Because he, he's the most charming guy in the film. He's amazing. Yes. Yes. Very charismatic. Eating those pistachios. Oh. Just, <laughs> yeah. You know, just kind of had this cool attitude, you know just carried himself with the uh, just you know he had it going on that's how, yeah. how he carried himself even <laughs> off the set and he was he was just very fine gentleman well seems though bb has a new sponsor this is totally random but i've got to ask it so yeah. i was i was told on um by one of the stunt men we were talking to on the set that they played a lot of football on the beach um and they were and they were saying about how Topol was this like amazing goalkeeper on the set. So <laughs> like wow. so apparently like they were in Greece and they were filming the scenes yeah. and then they what? played these scenes at be- football on the beach in the practice. Yeah. So- soccer. Yeah. Soccer, yeah. soccer. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, not in Greece. Oh, in, you missed all in that. the movie you see yeah. me walk across the hallway and it looks like I'm in Greece because that part is taking place you know by the monastery right but um that little hallway passed by was uh at, at I don't know how Cubby decided to save a couple thousand dollars by not having to fly to Greece I guess <laughs> oh. so that was shot at Pinewood so oh. I missed uh, I miss Topol in the football and uh, yeah. So where we were you staying on the beach, and I'm thinking, uh, yeah, no, no, you didn't see the beach, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but like the uh, final scene where, of course, uh, Columbo is oh, like, right. you're treating his wounds, aren't you? And he, yeah, <laughs> where was that? Yeah, from? that was Pinewood. Oh, was it right? Oh, yeah. uh, that's amazing. Yeah. It does, look yeah, like it does, it does, it does not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you know they had a lot of problems in Greece with the yeah. monastery. Yeah. So I don't know if um, perhaps they just decided to get out of Dodge. Yeah. And do <laughs> some of that stuff back at Pinewood. Yeah. Possibly, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Because there's some scenes with you there, where you're being told off because you you're being a bit. I don't know. You, you're answering back to Christatos. Hurry! Unless you want me to go without, you know, I will never leave you. Where's Brink? What have you done to her? Go back to your room. You can go to hell. <laughs> and he and he slaps you. That's another. That's quite a sad scene as well. Yeah. Right. Was it? What was that like to film? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it is funny. I do remember that day being a little rushed, which um, is interesting because, as I already explained, you know, it's a James Bond budget, you know, mm-hmm. Cubby's got it going on, right? It's that, but that day, I, it, it was kind of rushed. And I don't know, maybe John Glenn um, created that tension. Yeah. But it was like, um, you got to be standing here when, you know, and the slap is coming. And, you know, it was just maybe that was John Glenn's idea to mm. create it that way. Yeah. Um, I just remember it being like, oh, God, oh, what's going to happen? You know, I just remember it being like that. It's very convincing. It, it's it's very effective. I mean, it's probably the only time in the whole film that Christatos gets angry and loses it to be honest right right so so it's very effective if that's what he was trying to do to get you to rush because yeah it's great 
Yeah. Yeah. That's was... John Glenn. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah. And was was right? Julian Glover? What was Julian Glover like to work with? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. I mean, all the, all those guys were major theater actors, right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, they knew what they were doing. Boy, just um, yeah. I was just surrounded by a lot of wonderful no. people. Yeah. I Super. felt I felt really lucky. Yeah. Yeah. And that must must help you as a young actor, you know, a young actress, having these amazingly experienced actors surrounding you, the director and all this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Extend your arms! Right. A shot of Signor Cristato. Ah. Cristatos, Aris Cristat. Bond, James Bond. Would you care to join me in some glue vine? Oh, that's a very good idea, thank you. Well, gentlemen, how can I help you? We'd like some information. My protege, a sure winner in the next Olympics. She's completely absorbed in her skating, but uh, innocent in the ways of the world. The day she wins the gold medal will be the greatest in my life. Phoebe! Here are some new admirers for you. Mr. Bond, Mr. Ferrara, Phoebe Dahl. And her coach, Jakob Brink, once a world-class skater herself. I've seen Miss Brink skate. And I think the world will soon be seeing a great deal of your skating too, Miss Dahl. Only if she works harder. Much harder. Oh, Uncle Larry, can I stop now? I'm pooped. Well, that's for Miss Brink to decide. Come, Bibi. Another half hour's practice. Uncle Larry, will you take me to the biathlon? Bibi, you know I have to work this afternoon. Bibi wants to know if you would escort her, Mr. Bond. I don't I think... would feel better if there were someone with her. Well, I'd be delighted. I'm staying at the Miramonte. Great. As I went on in my career and I started doing, um, how oh, I would do some movies that, you know, my agent would say, I don't think you should be doing this. And I'd say, oh, I want to be at that location. I want to be, you know, mm. in the Philippines, whatever, you know. Yeah. And um, so I saw both sides, which only made me appreciate more you know, these wonderful directors and, you know, a leisurely budget, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty special. Oh, so you, at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned skiing as well. So did you, could you ski before? Because you have to ski a lot. Yeah, but... yeah, no, um, we, I skied qu quite a bit as right. a kid. Um, when I started getting serious about competitive figure skating, you know, the coaches didn't want me skiing at all. While we were in Cortina, and, you know, my part in Cortina was not that large, right? So mm. I had a lot of free time. And so I was set up, my sister and I, to spend the day skiing with a very fine Italian specimen of man who takes <laughs> skiing each day no. so that, that was pretty fun <laughs> <laughs> you, you were yes. actually like baby maybe then. i need a little bit more practice yeah. you know? oh, amazing. <laughs> you didn't take your rubber duck with you did you yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i'm just it's just going uh, to my head now at the royal premiere what was the reaction like to the scene in the bed i mean <laughs> You got royal oh, to watch it. I bet that's hilarious. But yeah. Um, I don't know if it was really loud, hilarious, because you Brits are are pretty calm and cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not us. Maybe as time went on, maybe it has gotten funnier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't recall Charles laughing hysterically. No. <laughs> King George. <laughs> oh, I still love Charles, 
Yeah. Is that like is that totally uncool? No, it's no. We still call him Prince by accident. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. We. Yeah. It, you know, he's he's been in our lives all these years as Prince. Yeah. Charles, right. So it's difficult to think of him as king, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Amazing. <laughs> oh, so good. That's yeah. it. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Well, Thank you. And it's been welcome. wonderful. This has been great fun. Yeah. We just yeah, we just want to emphasize again just like how great BB Dahl is and thank yeah. you so much for just um yeah <laughs> like chatting with us. Oh wonderful. Oh, thank lovely. you so much. <laughs> lovely. So good. Oh, thank you so much though. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Guys. Well, yeah. Good, yeah. good luck to you with everything. And uh, if I get back over there, I'll find you guys. Yeah. Oh, definitely. yeah, please yeah. do. That would be lovely. Good night, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good night, Mr. Bond, but not goodbye. Well, isn't that going <laughs> to say something? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Good night, Mr. Bond. No, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Farewell, Mr. Bond. Good night, Mr. Bond. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant! The voice is still the same as well. It's I know, so yeah, good. Yeah, like you the, the film. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Well, okay. Thank you so much, Here, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Baby, I'm afraid I have to leave you. No, oh, James, stay with me. I have an appointment. Well, will you come and say goodbye to me at the practice rink later? Please, James, we're going back to Greece soon. All right, but if I can't make it, all I can say is don't grow up anymore. Huh? Well, the opposite sex would never survive it. <laughs>